What up dudes? This is a phone cooler and today we're going to be seeing if it actually improves the performance of the phone. Let's talk about it. So when I originally reviewed my Pixel 7, I noted that it was heating up really quickly. Specifically when I was watching media or playing games, it was heating up and that was causing the performance to go down. I also talked about this in my batteries video where heat is the worst thing that can happen to your battery. Check it out right there. Besides ruining your phone, the heat can actually throttle your CPU and GPU. Throttling is when your CPU or GPU gets so hot that it starts to decrease in performance. The most effective way to prevent throttling is via cooling. This is why big gaming PCs have fans on them and why laptops will never be as fast as gaming PCs. They have less cooling. Your phone doesn't really have much cooling unless you have an ROG phone. The most this has is a couple of hot plates that kind of divert the heat away from important parts. It doesn't have any moving fans or any fluid moving through it to cool it down. So that's where this comes in. It's a little clip-on cooler, clips on just like that, then you just supply power. The fan will blow hot air away, and then the metal plate on the inside of the cooler will get really, really cold, effectively cooling down the phone. And I can attest, it gets really cold. If I leave the cooler on here for about five minutes and then unclip the phone, it is cold to the touch. But does it actually prevent throttling? Let's see. I ran tests in three different programs to test short-term GPU performance, long-term GPU performance, and CPU performance. For the short-term GPU performance and for the CPU performance tests, I tested it in four different categories. That being with and without the cooler, and I also added plugged in or not plugged in, because when it's plugged in, the battery tends to heat up a lot quicker. For the short-term GPU test, I took three consecutive tests and then averaged them all. Starting off with the short-term GPU test, I did the 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme test. This tests frame rates of a graphically intensive game at 4K. You can see the winner here was the cooler, while the phone was plugged in being supplied power but it's not by much. Plugging in the phone versus not plugging in the phone doesn't make a whole lot of difference when it comes to GPU performance. It really just depends on whether you're low on battery because no matter how much heat you're adding to the device, the cooler will always eject it. But like I said, while it was plugged in being supplied power, the phone performed a little bit better, but not by much at all. When I unclipped the cooler, that's when things started to really fall apart. The no cooler plugged in run went really well at the start and then quickly went downhill. And by the end of it, it was like almost too hot to touch. This is because the phone kept getting hotter and hotter throughout the tests and there was nothing to cool it down. Now, when it wasn't plugged in and there was no cooler, it just did bad all around. The phone without an access to power probably just throttled performance a little bit to save on battery. Okay, those are basically the results I was expecting with the one minute GPU test. Now let's move on to the long-term GPU tests. For this, I did the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. It's a 20 minute test and I ran it twice. Once with the cooler and once without the cooler. Both of them were plugged in because I didn't want to run out of battery. With the cooler, it scored a 1608.55 average. And without the cooler, it was a 1477.8. Again, that's exactly what I expected. Basically, without the cooler, the scores kept going down, 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 down as the phone was heating up and throttling even more and more. With the cooler, the score stayed pretty much consistent over the 20 minutes. So overall, in GPU performance, it looks like the cooler is effective at stopping thermal throttling. Now let's move on to CPU. So this one didn't make a whole lot of sense. The highest score was the cooler while the phone wasn't plugged in. It seems like the cooler doesn't have a whole lot of effect on the CPU performance, but what did I expect? It's a Google phone. The CPU on this guy isn't that great anyway. It's only the second tensor chip. What seemed to have a much bigger effect on CPU performance was whether or not it was plugged in. Specifically in the no cooler category, when it was unplugged, it scored much lower on both the single core and multi-core. So basically, if you want a boost in your GPU performance, a big boost in fact, that's like when you're playing games or rendering something, then you're gonna want one of these coolers. Not only does it improve performance, but it actually extends the life of your battery. I know I'm probably going to be using this when I'm at home playing games, but let's be real for a second. This thing isn't practical to bring anywhere other than your home. It's just hard to hold in your hands and I don't see anybody carrying this anywhere. So it's a really cool idea in theory and I'm definitely gonna use it in the privacy of my own home. But in practice, not that great. Party on dudes.